Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this lecture we shall be studying the sutras of the type of Atidesha extension in the system of Paninian Grammar. We have been studying the types of sutras so far. So far we have studied Saudhnya, Paribhasha, Vidhi and Niyama. Now the next important type of sutra is Atidesha. These types of sutras, they have different functions, they play different roles in the overall system of Paninian grammar. We saw that the Saudhnyas, which are the technical terms, they categorize the lexicon they also give us some artificial terms which are used in the meta language and explain them so that the system can explain the data more effectively and in a more systematic manner. Paribhashas are the meta rules which help us interpret the sutras in the system of Paninian grammar. Vidhi is the most important part which is the rules which prescribe certain operations. The main amongst these operations is to state the pratyaya, before that also to state the action and the grammar helps us identify the pratyayas, the grammar helps us know which pratyaya is to be added after a root element in order to form which word which denotes which particular meaning. Niyama was a contraction of the vidhi which is a restatement and a very unique kind of rule which makes a positive statement but results in the negation. Now we come to Atidesha. So what is Atidesha? The definition of Atidesha given in the tradition is Anyatra Drishtasya Dharmasya Anyatra Upadesha Atidesha. A property which is located somewhere, that property gets stated to be the property of something else in which that property does not exist. This way of stating the a property is called Atidesha. So a property which is located in X for example is stated to be located in Y where it is actually not located. Such a statement is called extension statement or Atidesha Sutra. Such a statement assumes X to possess properties of Y. In order to get some operation continued or some operation getting done. It is very important to note here that when an extension happens, Y does not become X, Y remains Y. It is only assumed, Y is only assumed to possess the properties of X in order to carry out certain operations. In a nutshell, we can say that Y acts like X in certain environments. This is what is the core of the concept of Atidesha. This is a principle based also on the worldly experience. This is not just innovated in the system of Paninian grammar, but we also use this in our daily life where it is invariably observed that X who possesses certain features or functions etc. is absent from its post and Y is acting in place of X in order to continue 
the functions of that particular important post. And Y acts assuming the features or functions of X. So, for example, we have this particular statement which is a modern statement Kulaguruvat Upakulagurau Kvartitavyam. This is a slight modification of the traditional statement in order to match we match the modern times and in order to make it prominent we modified that traditional statement. The statement is Kulaguruvat Upakulagurau Kvartitavyam. When a vice chancellor of a particular university is absent for various reasons, probably he is visiting some other university. In such a case, in order to carry out the important duties of the post of the vice chancellor, the pro vice chancellor assumes the features and the functions of the VC for some time. And then that pro vice chancellor in that period is called acting vice chancellor. He is not vice chancellor, he is acting vice chancellor. So, pro vice chancellor assumes the duties, properties of the vice chancellor, but pro vice chancellor does not become a vice chancellor, he remains or she remains a pro vice chancellor, but there are certain properties, there are certain functions that get extended. And we have similar examples in all spheres of life. What is known as the concept of pratinidhi or the representation, representative can also be explained as an example of the principle of atidesha getting manifest in the daily life. Now, this concept of atidesha is based on the concept of prasanga. So, let us try to see, let us try to study what is the concept of prasanga. <coughs> this concept plays a crucial role in the process of extension. This forms the base and provides a general background for extension to happen. It also ensures continuity in the process of derivation of a sentence which is what is the major aim of Vyakarana Shastra. Now, the concept of prasanga is defined as following Nimitta Sadbhava Pravritti Anukula Avasara Visheshaha Nimitta Sadbhava Pravritti Anukula Avasara Visheshaha The specific scope or occasion favorable for application of the element or operation due to the existence of the conditions is termed prasanga. I repeat the specific vishesha, avasara, scope or occasion favorable anukula for application of the element or operation pravritti due to the existence sadbhava of the conditions nimitta. This scope or occasion is called prasanga. This definition is taken from the Shabda Sutra. So, here is an explanation. So, on the left hand side, we have two stages, two steps. On the right hand side, we have five depicting the derivation process. We have studied this process before. On the whole, there are 10 steps of derivation of the words. Now, the meaning acts as the earlier condition of the words getting derived and sentence getting derived. So, this meaning which is shown on the left hand side of this slide, which has got two steps, one is generic, the other one is also general, but needs to be also specified, which gets specified in the course of time. We have seen this. But this is a precursor, this is the cause, so to speak, of the word getting derived in a particular fashion shown on the right hand side. So now, this left hand side acts 
as the prasanga. When this particular meaning element, this particular arthakasha is to be expressed, these are the words which are collected together through these stages, be it generic, general and then specific ones occupying the slots and so on and so forth continuing up to this. In each and every step the properties get extended. All the properties that are part of this process they, which are stated over here they get extended to the next, they get extended to the subsequent steps in the process of derivation. And it is this part, meaning part which plays as a major background, major condition for this entire process to happen. All the 10 steps have these two steps and the further steps, corresponding steps to all these as the necessary conditions and as the prasanga. <coughs> there are two steps of derivation in the meaning part mentioned on this slide, but we have already, already shown that there could be many corresponding to the right hand side word derivation and 10 steps of derivation in the sentence part. The generic slots in the first step get substituted by the specific elements in the form of root and suffix in the second step. The root and suffix formation does carry the properties of meanings from the first step. The second step consists of the general root and suffix categories of words, they get substituted by specific word elements in the third step onwards. The third step onwards carry on the properties of the specific kind of roots and suffixes as well as the meaning into the next subsequent step. And this continues, this continues up to the end of the derivation process. Each and every step in this process does inherit certain properties from the previous step as well as steps and carry forward the same properties as well as some additional properties wherever possible to the subsequent steps. The final steps can be described in terms of properties they inherited from their previous steps. This is very important, the final steps can be described in terms of properties they inherited from their previous steps. Going back, this is the final step, Gatsati Ramo Gramam. This is the final shape of the sentence, first of all present in the Shabda Kasha, which then gets an audible expression. So this stage, this stage of derivation, this step can be said to possess, can be said to inherit the properties that existed in the step 9, 8, 7, 6, so on right from step 1 and even going before that the meaning steps. So Gachati Ramo Gramam inherits all those steps. This is what is the extension of properties as far as the derivation is concerned and obviously this ensures that there is one continuity of the derivation. And the derivation is bracketed by certain conditions which is known as the meaning conditions which act as the prasanga as described by the grammatical tradition. So thus gachati can be described in terms of the root it possesses, namely the verbal root gamma and the suffix that is added to it namely the thing which was added in an earlier step. Similarly, Ramaha can be described in terms of the root it possesses, namely the nominal root Rama and the suffix Su that is added to it which is part of Sup. Similarly, Gramam can be described in terms of the root it possesses, namely the nominal root Grama and the suffix Am that is added to it which is part of the Sup suffixes. So, Gachati Ramo Gramam is a sentence which can be described in this particular format. This is possible because this last 
stage of sentence derivation inherits the properties that were stated right in the first step of sentence derivation plus the meaning conditions that existed before and also simultaneously. Each earlier step can be said to provide the prasanga for the rules to apply to generate each subsequent step. This is very important. This is the scope of the concept of atidesha as far as the overall derivation of sentence is concerned in the Paninian grammatical tradition. Now let us come to some specific examples of this extension. One of the most important examples is that of sthanivat adeshaha. We know that the process of substitution is the main process involved in the Paninian grammatical tradition where x element is substituted by y. Now when this substitution process happens, what happens is the x which is substituent, y is a substitute, y inherits the properties of x. Now this is precisely what is stated by this sutra sthanivat adeshaha analvidhau 1156. What this means is that a substitution acts like a sthani which is a substituent except in the operations based on individual sounds, properties on individual sounds. Sthani is the one which possesses the sthana and sthana means prasanga the occasion of application based on the existence of the conditions. So, sthani vadadeshaha analvidhau means a substitution acts like a sthani except in the operations based on individual sounds that is properties on individual sounds. So, here is an example asa plus the in the environment of the suffix the aster bhuhu 2452 applies and prescribes the substitution of bhu in place of us. So, we get asa plus the replaced by substituted by bhu plus the asa gets substituted by bhu and though so we get the form bhuta. Now in this case bhu which is a substitution in place of asa, asa is the substituent, asa is the sthani, bhu is the adesha. Now this bhu inherits the property of being a verbal root from asa because of 1156 and therefore this bhuta is considered kridanta because this suffix ta is a krit and this bhu comes in place of asa to which this ta is added. So bhu inherits the property of verbal root from asa and therefore bhuta can be considered as a kridanta in this case. But bhu does not inherit the property of being a vowel beginning verbal root from asa which is which it is. So asa is a vowel beginning verbal root bhu is a consonant beginning verbal, verbal root. When bhu comes in place of us, when bhu is the substitution in place of us, bhu inherits the property of being a verbal root true, but it does not inherit the property of being a vowel beginning verbal root. Because this property of vowel beginning verbal root is based on the properties of an individual sound a uh, and bh. Bhu remains a consonant beginning verbal root and as a result when we form the verbal forms of asa plus lung, this step does not get an augment a which is stated to be added to verbal roots to the vowel beginning roots. So asa is a vowel beginning root yes but bhu is not. When asa gets replaced by bhu we consider it as a consonant beginning verbal root and so we do not add a, we add a and so we get the forms abhut and so on. So this is the explanation of sthanivat adeshaha and analvidhau. Alvidhi is the vidhi which is based on al which is a sound. 
Here is another example. In the stage Sudhi plus Upasya, which is a compound, 6177 applies where E, long E, is replaced by Y. Y is the substitute, E is the substituent. Y is the Adesha, E is the Sthani. And then we get Sudhya Upasya. At this stage, 8447 applies, which requires this kind of construction, these constituents of the word. Say the element should be C1, before that there should be C2, and before that there should be a V, that is a vowel. So vowel, consonant and consonant. This should be the condition. Now in this case, C2 gets reduplicated and the output would be V, C2, C2 and C1. So this C2 should be any consonant minus H and then this C2 gets reduplicated. This is what 8447 says. Now in the present case, here is a consonant. If you look at this Sudhya Upasya, here is U which is a vowel, then there is the which is a consonant which can act as C2 and then there is a consonant here which is C1. So exactly we have this stage V, C2, C1. Now this year, this C1 is a consonant, C2 is the which is a consonant minus her, that means all consonants except her and so this C2 can get reduplicated into C2, C2. Now here is a consonant but remember it is a substitute which has replaced a vowel E. Now this substitute cannot inherit the vowel property from the substituent E. So you cannot consider this C1 as a vowel even though this year comes in place of this E which is a substituent. And Sthani Vadadesha Anilvidhav says that the properties of Sthani get inherited by the, proper, by the substitute. The substitute gets the properties of the substituent. So can this year get the property of being a vowel from the substituent E? The answer is no because this is based on the property of an individual sound. Therefore, this year cannot be considered as a vowel. It remains as a consonant. And because it remains as a consonant, then this 8447 applies and we get V, C2, C2, C1. Therefore, we have Su, the the Ya Upasya. And finally, we get this form Sudhya Upasya. This is a patent example given in the Sandhi Prakarana of the Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi. There is quite a lot of discussion on this. There are some other sutras from the Sthanivad section that are brought in into discussion. We shall not go study those sutras right now in this course. We reserve them for the advanced level course. It is important to note that this process of substitution, Sthani and Adesha, and the extension, Sthanivad Bhava, is considered as a standard of comparison. So here is a verse taken from Raghuvamsha of Kalidasa 1258 which describes a particular phenomenon in the life of Sri Rama which is described in a very beautiful manner using this extension as a standard of comparison. See the verse is like this Sahatva valinam viram tatpade chirakankshite dhato sthana ivadesham Sugrivam sanyavesha yat. I repeat, Sahatva valinam viram tatpade chirakankshite dhato sthana ivadesham sugrivam sanyavesha yat. What it means is, Rama placed Sugriva on the throne, which was much coveted for long by him, Sugriva, after having slain Valin, just as one places a substitute in place of a verbal root. So just as a grammarian would first put a verbal root and then replace it by its substitute as we did in Asa plus the, similarly Rama placed Sugriva in place of Valin after having slain Valin, after having removed Valin from that place, that position. So Kalidasa in order to describe this 
particular action of Rama remembers the process of substitution and the process of extension described in the Paninian grammar and compares this action of Rama with this substitution taking place in grammar. So, replacing a verbal root by a substitution here is mentioned here as a standard of comparison. This grammatical process seems to have gained so much popularity to, to get this status. Here the post of an emperor is the prasanga, valin is the sthani and so griva is the substitute. So here are those sups, the generic slots. We also note that Panini has used the technique of sthanivad bhava in deriving the nominal padas, the subantas. In dealing with words which have different forms in different columns, the technique of sthanivad bhava comes in very handy for Panini to begin the derivation process with one item at one time. The principle of Atidesha plays a very important role in the explanation and arrangement of such forms. And then the other example of the Sthanivad Bhava in Paninian grammar is that of the pronominal forms of Yishmat, second person pronoun. And here is a table provided to you which has all, this, all the forms of sup together with the accent as well, tvam, yuvam, yuyam, etc. If we notice, if we study these forms closely, we note that tva, yuva and yashma seem to be the most common verbal elements in the respective columns. For example, in the first column, tva seems to be the part of each and every form, almost each and every form except this tu where va is replaced by u. In this second column, yuva seems to be there in each and every form, yuvam, yuvam, yuvabhyam, etc. Similarly, in case of this third column, yashma seems to be there in each and every form except this first one, but there is u which is common. So, yushma seems to be most common, yuva seems to be most common and tva seems to be most common amongst all these forms. Now, Paninian grammar succeeds first of all in bringing together all the forms in the generic slots shown earlier, sub slots. Then it assumes one root form for all these forms listed in these three columns to be generated. Then it assumes yushmad to be the root or starting point and states tva and yuva as its substitutes in columns 1 and 2 respectively. And we have sutras like ma paryantasya where the ma paryanta form of yashma gets substituted by tva and yuva and so on. So yashmat is the substituent, tva and yuva are the substitutes in the respective columns and the meanings as well as the pratyayas in those respective columns, they act as prasanga. So the prasanga being there, yashmat gets substituted by tva in the first column and yuva in the second column and yashmat, the maparyanta part of yashmat, that gets substituted. This is also stated in the system of Paninian grammar. This is how prasanga and sthanivad bhava has been treated in the grammar and also it has gained so much popularity that it becomes a standard of comparison as far as the literature is concerned. The next important point to be noted or studied in this particular case is extension on lopa. Lopa or deletion or zero substitution is stated as a substitute in Paninian grammar in place of various verbal elements. For example, sometimes a Pratipadika gets deleted entirely then pratyayas get deleted and so on. This zero substitution is stated to inherit the properties of its substituent, 
which is extremely genuine and extremely unique and important that the zero substitution is also turned into something positive and it is stated to inherit the properties of the substituent. For example, any indeclinable or avyaya is termed a pratipadika first after which the suffix sup is added and then it is made a pada, it becomes a subanta. But these sub suffixes are deleted or substituted by zero as far as the Paninian system is concerned. But even after the deletion of these suffixes, they still, the zero still inherits the property of being a sup and an avyaya is considered a subanta namely pada and therefore fit to be used in a sentence. The examples like pratar or vina, nana, ch, tu, etc. All of these words, they get sup to be added after them and then it's sup to be deleted. But this zero which comes in place of sup still inherits the property of the sup and therefore all these words they are called padas because they are subantas. Even though you do not see a sup over there, as far as the Paninian grammatical system is concerned and the derivation process is concerned, they are subantas. Now, we shall study two important types of atidesha. Now, one of them is the dharma atidesha, where the property gets inherited. And here are the examples. So, extension of properties is called dharma atidesha. Sarvadhatuka mapit is an example, 1, 2, 5. What this means is a sarvadhatuka suffix which does not have per as a marker is termed nyat. A sarvadhatuka suffix which does not have per as a marker is termed to have ng as a marker. This is very strange but very peculiar and this is why it is an atidesh. So, ting suffixes and any other suffix added to a verbal root with marker sh is termed sarvadhatuka. We have already studied this definition. So, the sutra is sarvadhatuka mapit and what is sarvadhatuka? Thing suffixes and any other suffix added to a verbal root with marker sh is termed sarvadhatuka. So, for example, all these 18 parasmipada, atmanipada things, they are called sarvadhatuka. Amongst the thing suffixes, only three are marked with per, notably these three in green, tip, sip and mip. Only they are marked with per. So, they are pits. What happens to others? You can say that by definition, by default, they are a pits. That means per is not a marker in any of these suffixes, 15 suffixes. So, they are all a pit, the purple ones. So, the rest 15 will automatically be a pits. Now, this sutra 1, 2, 5 says that all of them they will be termed as nyet, as having ng as the property. Here there is an extension of the property of being a nyet, nyetva. This is the dharmati desha, where the property of nyetva is extended to the 15 suffixes. Similarly, in the case of chi plus t, and then we add the suffix shnu in between. So, we get chi shnu ti. Chi is a verbal root in the fifth conjugation and ti is the suffix which was stated earlier tip. So, this is pit. Now, we have another suffix coming in shnu. Shnu is a suffix which is not a thing but has a marker sh and this shnu is added to a verbal root. So, it is also a sarvadhatuka suffix. Since it does not have a marker p it is also a pit and hence it will be termed nyit. So, this shnu is nyit, t is not nyit because it has per as a marker, so it is pit. So, this is not nyit, but this is nyit now. And then 115 nitiche will apply here and will negate the substitution in place of e, u, etc. So, there is a gunavruddhi substitution stated in place of e and u which gets negated by Nitiche 115 and then 115 Nitiche will apply here and will negate the substitution in place of E and U etc. 
which is guna and vriddhi. Now in case of chi shnuti, e in chi does not get the substitution as it is followed immediately by a suffix which is gnit. This shnu is gnit by the atidesha, dharma atidesha. But u in shnu will get the substitution, this shnu, this u gets the substitution as it is followed by a suffix which has a marker per tip. So we have chi shnu ti. So this u in shnu will be substituted by o by 7384. So we get chi no ti. And the final form chi no ti gets derived. However, this nu does not get this substitution when the suffix is tas because this is then a nit by the dharmati desh. So in Chinutaha, substitution will be again negated by 115 as the suffix tas here is nyet sabai sarvadhatukam apit. This is how dharmati desha functions. Next we have karyati desha. Extension of the functions is called karyati desha. For example, lotolangvat in place of lot extend the actions that are done to the substitutes in place of lung. So what are these actions? So in place of load, extend the actions that are done to the substitutes in place of lung. The substitutes which come in place of lung take certain actions, extend them to the substitutes which come in place of load. That is the meaning. What are these actions? These actions are the substitutions, tam, etc affected by 34101 and the deletion of sa by 3499 tamadayaha salopascha. So these are the things which are part of the lung substitution. Lung is uh, an abstract suffix postulated by Panini in order to describe the derivation process of the verbal suffixes which express the past tense imperfect and here are those 18 thing suffixes when lung is used and here are those 18 suffixes when lot is used. Lot is another abstract suffix postulated by Panini when these thing suffixes express the, the meaning namely inspiration which is an order. So here we have tip, sip and mip which are pit and the rest all they are the nit suffixes. Here are the thing suffixes which are the substitution of lot and by extension we have this tas, thas, th, me, was and mas. They all get substituted in this particular fashion, tam, tam, ta and um and this sa gets deleted into these two suffixes. So the purple suffixes stated over here, they indicate the operations that happen to the lot substitutions which also happen in lung. To summarize, atidesha is an extremely important type of sutra. This extension holds the entire derivation process together by maintaining the continuity of conditions throughout, throughout the process of derivation. The types of atidesha serve various grammatical purposes for the sake of derivation of sentences as an output. The deletion or zero is also given the status of substitution and properties are extended to the absence as well. An absence is turned into a substance holding properties like others. This is a unique contribution of Paninian grammar. Now remains the sixth type of sutra adhikara to be studied which we shall study in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention.